The average American adult spends a large percentage of their life in the workplace. In order to be productive and to do the best job they can do, they must have a working environment free from discrimination. Discrimination of any type has no place in an organization, and sexual harassment is perhaps the most destructive form of discrimination. But what exactly is sexual harassment? It's not always as easy to define as you may think. In this program, we'll examine what sexual harassment is, give you tips on how to recognize sexually harassing behavior, and advise you on what you should do if you're a victim of sexual harassment. Not dealing with sexual harassment can undermine the success and morale of any organization. We all want an environment where everyone is able to do their best and work together effectively as a team. To accomplish this goal, we all need to be aware that sexual harassment exists and it must not be tolerated on any level. First, let's take a look at some statistics regarding sexual harassment. You might be surprised at how prevalent sexual harassment is. According to national polls, over 30% of female employees report having been harassed in some way in the workplace. That's 30% too many, and it's not just women who are the victims of sexual harassment. But what can you do about it? The first thing is to know the law. In 1980, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission declared sexual harassment an unlawful employment practice. In 1986, a major Supreme Court decision affirmed the illegality of sexual harassment. In 1998, the court mandated that employers take appropriate steps to stop sexual harassment. To put it simply, sexual harassment is against the law. It's the employer's responsibility to train and educate all employees about sexual harassment and stop sexual harassment in the workplace. It's your responsibility to report any cases of sexual harassment to your supervisor or other appropriate party immediately. According to federal law, sexual harassment is a form of sex discrimination that involves unwelcome sexual favors and other unwanted verbal or physical conduct based upon sex which adversely affects a person's job or which creates a hostile and offensive work environment. The first thing you must know is that in order for behavior to be considered sexual harassment, it must be unwelcome to the victim. That's to say, sexual harassment is, in the eye of the beholder, if sexual conduct or behavior is welcome, it may not be illegal, but it is definitely detrimental to any work environment. Sexual conduct becomes illegal at any time if it becomes unwelcome for the victim. If the sexual advance is first rejected as a welcome by the individual, but the victim later submits to harassing behavior out of fear for their job, the harassment is still illegal. Let's take a look at how the law defines sexual harassment. The courts have traditionally recognized two types of harassment. The first type of harassment is quid pro quo. Quid pro quo is Latin for this for that. Let's take a look at an example of quid pro quo harassment. Hey, Miss Molina, Bill said you want to see me. Hey, David, yes, I just wanted to check the progress on the chemical order, make sure it's going to ship by Friday. Well, it is. It, it definitely is. We ran into a few snags, but I was able to borrow some people from the other line. So we're going to get it done by Thursday afternoon at the latest. Thanks, David. And you know, you can call me Lisa. I've been really impressed with the work that you've been doing lately. Well, we work at it. We try hard. I can see that you try hard, David. You know, there's more to life than work, you know. There's fun, relaxation, maybe a little bit of romance. I have a beach house not too far from here. Maybe just the two of us could get together and talk about the supervisor position opening up at the plant. I have a great bottle of Merlot, nice view. Quid pro quo, this for that. You come with me to my beach house and we can discuss a promotion. That's illegal because she has implied that submission to such conduct is a condition of advancement or promotion. The victim may suffer in a different way. He may suffer a tangible loss, like the opportunity to advance his career. There may be other intangible losses which can be just as devastating. Victims of sexual harassment often feel humiliated and disgraced. Some people suffer guilt, mental anguish, and loss of self-esteem. You might be saying to yourself, how could that last example be sexual harassment? Nothing was said, it was only implied. 
She didn't say he wouldn't get the promotion if he didn't go. In fact, subtle remarks like these can be the hardest to detect and are often the most frequent type of harassment. I have a beach house not too far from here. Maybe just the two of us could get together and talk about the supervisor position opening up at the plant. I have a great bottle of Merlot, nice view. Just remember, once the conduct becomes repetitive and unwelcome, it's considered sexual harassment. It doesn't matter if a comment is explicit or hidden in innuendo. The law states that repetitive sexual harassment behavior is illegal. The law also defines a second type of sexual harassment, hostile work environment sexual harassment. This type of harassment is defined as unwelcome verbal or physical conduct such as pictures, words, touching based upon sex that interferes with an individual's job performance or which creates a hostile work environment. For example, repetitive lewd gestures or comments and any advances that invite sexual activity may be considered sexual harassment. Hey, Leah, can you grab that bus tub right there? We need to get some table saws. Sure. Thanks. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. Different people have different levels of sensitivity about a variety of things. This includes pain, emotions, stress, and of course, sexual issues. We're all different, and we may have different moral standards. What may be a joke to one person may be totally offensive to someone else. Legal rulings have determined that occasional teasing or simple rudeness is not sexual harassment. However, it becomes illegal if a reasonable person finds it objectionable and the victim subjectively or personally finds it offensive. For legal sexual harassment to occur, it must be based upon sex. That is, it must be of a sexual nature or it must be harassment that is gender related. Examples of behavior creating a hostile work environment could be dirty jokes, sexual contact, or offensive comments directed at a particular gender. Just females or just males or something offensive to men and women. If harassment occurs simply because an individual doesn't like a coworker and that harassment is not of a sexual nature, there is no legal sexual harassment claim. However, it is important to remember that on the job, Harassment of any type is wrong and should be avoided. Hostile work environment sexual harassment is more prevalent than you may think. Consider this case involving a female maintenance worker. Many of her male co-workers disliked or resented her. They never directly propositioned her or made overt sexual comments to her, but they gave her a hard time about everything and tried to make her job as unpleasant as possible. Why? Not because they disliked her as a person, but because they didn't like the idea of a woman doing that particular job. Males in similar positions were not harassed. This was a case of gender-based hostile work environment harassment. However, the more common type of sexually hostile work environment harassment does involve behavior that most people would define as sexual. Remember, sexual harassment can be committed by almost anyone, a coworker, a boss, or by a third party such as a vendor or a customer. And the behavior must interfere with the victim's job performance, making the work atmosphere abusive. Here's an example. <clears throat> Good afternoon, how may I help you? Hey darling, how about drinks and dancing when you get off? Hello Mr. Bishop, how can I help you? Not so fast sweetie, I thought you women kind of liked it slow. Mr. Bishop, I do have another client on the other line. Is there something I can help you with? There sure is, darling, but you know what? You go ahead and take care of that other call. We can talk about us when you're through. In this example, you can see how the behavior of the customer affected the victim's job performance. But is that enough to be ruled as sexual harassment? For it to be illegal sexual harassment, the behavior must be offensive. But what's offensive? One of the best ways to help answer that question is to ask yourself, would I act the same way if my spouse or family member were standing beside me? Or just stop and ask yourself, is my behavior unwelcome? Unwelcome is the key word when defining sexual harassment. Remember, sexual harassment is in the eye of the beholder. Simply put, when any unwanted, unsolicited, unwelcome conduct is imposed upon a person because of their sex, 
which is offensive or undesirable, it's sexual harassment. The Supreme Court has said that the provocative behavior of the victim, like the way they dress, sexual openness, or implied sexual favors, can be used to help determine whether or not the harasser's conduct was unwelcome or whether it was inviting. It's your responsibility to know what your organization's policies are regarding appropriate dress and professional conduct. Why? Because many organizations have people from a wide range of ages and backgrounds as part of the workforce, from first-time job holders to experienced employees who have been with the company for years. Each brings his or her own moral code to the job. You need to make sure, regardless of your background, what kind of dress and behavior is appropriate for your work environment. It's also important to understand how sexual harassment can affect others who are not directly involved. For instance, what happens if a less qualified employee gets a promotion that should have gone to someone else because the less qualified person gave in to sexual harassment? In this type of situation, the employee faces a choice between personal integrity and economic gain. If he or she takes the offer and is promoted, some courts have said that his or her fellow employees have been the victims of unlawful discrimination. Let's say another woman refuses the sexual advances of the supervisor. No direct action is taken against her, but her work environment becomes intolerable and abusive. She may still be the victim of sexual harassment. The Supreme Court has made it clear that employees will be immediately liable for the harassing conduct of supervisors if the victim has suffered a tangible adverse employment action such as a demotion, a discharge, or even a loss of employment or important responsibilities. Now that we've talked about what sexual harassment is, let's spend a couple of minutes talking about what to do about it. How should you respond? The first thing to remember when handling a sexual harassment situation is to stay in control of your emotions and concentrate on the facts. Next, you need to let the harasser or someone you trust know right away that you find the conditions or the behavior abusive and unwelcome. Hey Leah, can you grab that bus tub right there? We need to get some table saws. Sure. Thanks. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. Tim, I know you think the things you say are funny, but I find them offensive and I want you to stop. Directly confronting the harasser, if at all possible, is usually the best first step to resolving the situation before it gets out of hand. Calmly but firmly tell the harasser that you don't appreciate their behavior and that they are to stop. In many cases, directly confronting the harasser is all it takes to stop the behavior. Sometimes the harasser doesn't know their behavior is a problem. By simply calling it to their attention in a calm, professional manner, you can often resolve the situation before it gets out of hand. But what if you try to handle the situation yourself and the harassment continues? Or what if you don't feel comfortable directly confronting the offending person? In those situations, you should go to a third party for help. For instance, that might begin with reporting the incident to your supervisor. If the harasser is your supervisor, you should immediately go to his or her boss or someone in your organization who is designated to handle sexual harassment complaints. Last week on the 8th, he asked me to go out of town. Business trip, he said. What did you tell him? Well, I told him no, but he wouldn't let up. He said that it would be good for my career and that I might even get a promotion out of it. You know, I do a really good job for this company, and it's just not right that I would have to put up with that in order to advance. Once you've reported the situation to the organization, management, or human resources department, they have a legal obligation to investigate the situation and resolve the issue. Your employer should attempt to keep the matter as confidential as possible and ensure that you are treated with respect during the investigation process. Sadly, sexual harassment is a problem that isn't going to just go away. Everyone needs to do their part and take the steps necessary to ensure that it doesn't happen in your workplace. No one should tolerate any act in a sexual nature which is deliberate, repeated, unwelcome, or detrimental to a professional work environment. Remember to know the law. 
you should be familiar with and be able to identify the different forms of sexual harassment. You also need to be aware of your rights under the law. Speak up and confront the harasser or take one of the alternative actions discussed in this video. You need to follow your organization's policies and procedures to stop and prevent sexual harassment. Finally, take personal responsibility to ensure your organization maintains a professional environment free from sexual harassment. By taking personal responsibility for your actions, by doing what you can to prevent sexual harassment and responding quickly when it does occur, you can continue to make your organization the kind of place you and others enjoy working for.